Welcome again, MGTV, and I am happy. It is so good to see Arsenal playing some football, some proper, and I mean proper football. It is very much enjoying an entertaining game. It, we have been craving for these things for so long. No wonder why fans are in, so in tune into the Europa League rather than in the Premier League. Because in the Premier League, we're total crap. We are total crap in the Premier League. And we, when we step across to the Europa League, it's like a different team. But I know why. I know exactly why. Stay tuned and you will hear exactly why. There's a massive difference in between performance in the Premier League and in also the Europa League. Stay tuned. Boom. This is what now. Situation at hand. In the Premier League, we have more senior players playing in the Premier League. In the Europa League, we have the junior players playing in the Europa League. The more, I would say, fringe players. Now, fringe players, they are always here to improve. They are always here to impress. But one thing I know for a fact is that these players, they are playing with their heart. They are playing with their body. They are playing with their soul because this means a lot to them. Now, in the Premier League team, you have some money and some big money. You have some guys and some big money, some extreme massive cash. Their pockets are so heavy, they, they, they are finding it very hard to walk. And because of that, it plays on their mind. They have too much money, so it plays on their mind. Anyways, let me get into the meat of the matter. I'm so happy for that win and if you're an Arsenal fan and you're not happy about that, something is wrong. Go and check yourself. If you're an you're Arsenal fan and you haven't seen something that to be happy about today, go and check yourself because at the end of the day, this was a good win, an entertaining game. We have played poor teams like these before and we have been crap. Even playing poor teams, we have been crap. And for the first, we have seen, we have seen a team can say, okay, they're playing good, so let's enjoy the football. Boom, let's get into the starting lineup. That is the meat of the matter. So, the team lineup came out and everyone was confused. We didn't, we didn't know if it was a back four, back three, five, or whatever. But there was a base formation and something that most of us would understand. And I think that is what this is something that Mikel Arteta is working with at this particular time. And I'm going to go down a bit of explanation because something I saw when Danny Sabayas came on the pitch, he definitely, he dragged the team a bit deeper and I can explain to you how he did that. Each time um, Danny Sabayas will, will, um, was picking up the ball off the defenders, he was either to the far right or to the far left in almost the, the fullback position. When you as a midfielder are picking the ball up at that point, it means that the team is actually naturally going to um, dress back a bit in their own half. If you're a midfielder and you're collecting the ball from the defender at the halfway line, it means that you're already in the op opposition's half and you can turn and hurt them. So, Daniel Sabas, I think there's something that you should definitely fix upon. I'm not sure if you're shying away from the game or what, but that is something you fix upon. Look into the fact that also we didn't see Granit Xhaka. No, look into that. That means there's a possible chance that Mikel Arteta is moving away from the Granit Xhaka old incident are the, more, the old mindset that Granit Xhaka is that important because at this moment we know for a fact that it's not that important. Now, in the starting lineup, I definitely say the formation would be a 4-2-3-1. And here it goes. As you can see on the screen, you have Cedric at arm. Ron Arson in the goal, very good keeper. He, he's, he's very calm, on the ball, off the ball. He commands his area. I like that about him. He commands, commands his area. Didn't have much work to do today. The goal that, that, um, that I scored, um, I don't think he had much to do or to, to, to really defend himself in that it was a bad move from him or anything like that because definitely when the shot came off, two or three defenders were standing there and no, no one tried to get themselves in, in the line of shot. So, run our single goal and I'm going to do my, um, my, also my player ratings in the same sense. Run our single goal, Cedric Sarar is right back, Mustafi and Pablo Mari, centre-back pairing, Kolajinak at left-back. Now, what you see here, what I have on the screen is actually a 4-4-2, but it can transition into a 4-2-3-1. Look how easy it is. Now, what you see, and I, and I can tell you for a fact that this is what, exactly what happened. That's the back four. In the midfield pairing, the double pivot would be Ainsley Maitland-Niles and El Nini. The three in front of them, Pepe on the right, 
Nelson on the left and P uh, Alexander Lacazette, Lacazette playing essential attacking midfield position. That is the reason why Lacazette definitely will come so deep and pick the ball up off the defenders or even off the midfielders to try to link with the attack. And honestly, he did a great job doing that today. Hats off to him. And then we have Eddie Nketiah up front striking as a lone striker and which he did well. Put the defenders under pressure, put the keeper under pressure, high press, maintain it. Now, first thing that I saw today from the team was that intensity. High intensity, bravery. Intensity, bravery. Free, free roll movement in, in the attacking third. Something that I haven't seen Mikel Arteta really allow his, his players to do. I'm not sure if he trusts his players that much. Or is the fact that we're already through that he gave the players this amount of permission to play so free because we have definitely saw, uh, saw a free-minded attacking, attacking team which there were no chains on their, on their legs and no formal restrictions and it was good in my perspective now as i said you will see a 4-2-2 on the screen but it's actually a 4-2-3-1 in transition 4-2-2 when we're defending two banks of four two persons to press I'm not sure if you understand that. Many, not many people, persons um, who actually talk about football know that. You have two banks of four to defend and then two to do the pressing. That's how teams like Atletico Madrid, the old Juventus, the old AC Milan, that's how they used to defend. Two banks of four and the two persons to press and break the line. Now, when transitioning, we're transitioning to a 4 2 3 1, we're definitely seeing in the Midland Knights interchanging and helping. Nelson and also Kolodzinak on the break and, and also on the overlap every now and then Nelson and Pepe would interchange one go to the right the other go to the left that is where you see even um, the Emil Smith row goal came from where Pepe came across to the left and plays it softly to, um, to Maitland Niles and he plays it across the goal to Emil Smith row that is the form of transition I'm talking about that is the form of free movement that I've I haven't seen much of from Arsenal Football Club and I'm very much proud of it now there are some things that I want to say. These are the players on the screen here that I definitely say they stand out the best or stand out the most in this performance. Now you have players that stand out. Yes, Cedric had a good game. Um, Mustafi didn't have such a bad game. I would say Nelson also had a good game. And Ketty had a good game. But these players are the players that I see. Definitely I say I have to commend them. They really stand out. Especially Pablo Mari. Commanding around the defensive area, Lacazette linking the midfield and also the attack, and Pepe creating massive amount of pr problem for the for the defenders, and he was very much into it. And I would say, I was impressed by the performance from all three players. Mari commanding, massive presence inside our own box or some and inside the opposition box, massive presence, and I love that. I love that fact. That fact. Now, before I go any further. You can see on the top right of the screen, right close to Eddie Nketiah's head, you'll see a figure. That figure is 681. That is my subscription figure. No, please, I'm asking you, I want, it. I want that figure to rise. I'm moving towards 1000K. So I definitely would love that figure to reach one and three zeros. Help me out with that. Subscribe. Share. Share it. Share the content. Let someone see. And also, don't, don't forget, turn on the bell. Turn on the notification bell. Let's move back into the football. Now, let me get into a bit of stats that I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't able to put it up on, on that. But this is the statistics. We have, this is the first, maybe under Arteta, we have kicked so much shot. Maybe it's the first. But what I know for a fact is that since the retirement of um, Arsene Wenger, this is the first Arsenal I've had. 11 shots on target in a single football game first and that tells a lot now we had eight shots art off target one of the massive, massive thing i take away from this game is the amount of chances that we create we create a variety of chances and a variety of chances and that you would definitely say a player like pierre america bombing would thrive off a situation like today that's if he's putting the goals away no, they had seven shots at our goal and unfortunately three on target and one of them was a goal so we could have done much better in, re in regards to that goal but i will let them, let them off the hook because they have created many and, ver and many more chances for us to kill the game and i think that we should have definitely won this game by six or seven easily 
Now, we had 22 shots, 11 on target, 8 off target, and 8 big chances. Now, one other factor that we're realizing that Arsenal are, are getting better in is crosses. We're putting in more crosses now. Last, last, last week, last Sunday, we played um, Wolves and we had 33 crosses. Today, we, have, we had 28 crosses. Now, another factor is we have seen a dominant performance like this with possession and also winning the game and being comfortable. 70% possession in regards to their 30% possession. So we made a total of 617 passes and only 535 completed. Now they had only 177 passes completed, which means they were shocking. It could be a fact that they're, they're just not that good, but they were shocking. They were very poor. Ren Arson only had one keeper, one save to make, and basically that was it. That was it. That was it. Just dead. They didn't turn up. It's a Europa League side, so we expected something like that at the end of the day. And we're Arsenal. We shouldn't even be in Europa League. But at this point in time, we're a Europa League team, and I can take the banter for that. We're definitely a Europa League team, and we'll take the banter for that. But what I can say is today was a very good performance. I want to say thank you very much for tuning in. Oh, player ratings. Mm. Oh, player ratings. Player ratings and player ratings. Okay, our player ratings. Ah. Run Arson. Seven, standard seven, not had much to do. So easy game, relatively easy game for him. So all who had a standard game, it's a seven. Once you go below seven, something's wrong. Cedric, seven as well. Mustafi, seven. Mari, my man of the match, nine. Kolojinak, woo! Kolojinak. Okay, I see him moving forward, I see him progressing the ball, I see him darting down the line, mm, doing overlaps, mm, seven. Good. El Nini, 8, relatively good, composing midfield, very clean and tidy on the ball. He really loses the ball. And our, our, he, I saw he made a miss pass. He made a one miss, miss pass and led to a counter. But he was quick enough to get in transition. The counter wasn't perfect from them, but he was quick enough to get back and support. I'm, I'm quite sure if it was Jaka, they would, be a, they would clean because he would not be so quick enough to get back. I even applied that amount of pressure. Maitland has very good performance for Maitland has 8 as well. Nelson, good performance, 8. Nicholas Pepe, 9. No, 8. Pablo Mari, 9. 8. Enketia, 8. Lacazette, 8. That is my player ratings. Yeah, I think that is relatively easy. Go again. Ren Arson, 7. Cedric, 7. So, Aris. Cedric, Cedric. Anyways, Mustafi, 7. Mari, 8. No, Mari, 9. Man of the match. Kolojinak, 7. El Nini, Maitland Niles, 8. Pepe 8, Nelson 8, Lacazette 8, and Ketia 8. So 1 9, we have 1 9, and that is Mari. And he's the man of the match for me. Tell me what you, who you thought was the man of the match and put it in the comment. Because you might agree, you might disagree. But I thought um, Pablo Mari was exceptional. Anyways, thank you very much for tuning in. Before you go, please, please. Mm. Mm. drop a like share and subscribe turn on your notification bell so as soon as something drop let me see let me see hmm? you're the first to pick it up thank you very much again for tuning in military guna